Right, so today we're going to be looking at Formula 51. Yeah, baby! That's what I've been waiting for! Oh, 51st day, whatever you want to call it. The film was just absolutely hilarious. It has a decent, interesting story, but the character is like the standout of this film. So the film follows Elmo, yes, that's actually his name, played by Samuel Jackson, an absolute legend, as he comes over to good old England after blowing up some drug dealers. We follow him as he comes over to sell a new drug he has made, which he calls POS 51. Of course, it's not that easy as he has assassins, <laughs> racists, <laughs> and live action Mike Nolan all after him along the way. So before we get into the breakdown, I'll tell you what POS 51 is. And well, like I said, it's a drug, a very strong drug. <laughs> and it's said to be 51 times stronger than MDMA, cocaine and acid and 100% bullshit. What do you mean by that? If you want to know what I mean by that, then you're going to have to stick around. So the movie opens up and we see a young Elmo as he's driving away from his graduation, celebrating with some good music and a little doobies go with it. But unfortunately he's pulled over and the police officer arrests him so he loses the qualification he's just got. Shit, dude. <laughs> so this is like the reason he's had to turn to making drugs, it's because he's lost his official documents so he couldn't work in pharmaceuticals, which is probably for the best, there's a lot more money to earn illegal drugs anyway. So then we skip a few years and we're above Paddy's pub where we see a lab where Elmo is cooking up. <laughs> Wanna be pure. He makes a batch, he leaves the building, then the lizard and his men show up expecting a meeting. Where the fuck is he at? When Elmo doesn't show up for a bit, they call him and this causes a bomb to go off. But the lizard survives this and he calls a bounty hunter. So he calls her and he puts a hit on Elmo's head and she agrees. And we then cut back to Sam who grabs his gay outdoor lifestyle sticks and gets on a plane to England. Where he has set up a meeting with a dealer called Durant. So he gets aboard the plane, the hitman arrives on his plane too. No idea how she got that seat on such short notice. And while on this plane journey, Elmo's got a kid sat in front of him. And he decides that he's going to try and steal a sweet from his bag. And, well, unfortunately, Sam stops him. Spit it out. Tom? <sighs> what? Like, I don't understand why he's done that. He's got a really good product here. I don't know why he doesn't let him get hooked young and there'll be forever customers. We're then introduced to Frederick and Frank D'Souza. Fucking yanks. I'd be pleased if you kept your opinions to yourself. This particular yank is not a travelling salesman. He's a genius. Who is this cunt? Oh, and the chemist is in the back seat too. And as Frank likes to mention multiple times throughout the film, he's just here to drive Elmo to the meeting so he can get his tickets. Blokes are shagging the fucking mothers in law to get a ticket for that. And I'm getting sued from Mr. Durant. And these guys are all on their way to pick up Sam from the airport right now. On the way to the airport, they make a quick pit stop at the pub because Frank wants to taunt his rival team's fans. And on their way, the chemist just keeps blabbing on about it. They've got to get to the meeting and it's important. So Frank just asks Meatloaf to take care of him. But this is a unique window of opportunity for you. We are talking telephone numbers. Ah, uh, enough. Take care of him. So Frank goes up to the pub doors. He bursts into song and storms into the pub. You who walk through a storm. Flare in hand. And like Frank is just such an iconic character for so many reasons. And this is one of them. So he goes through a pub, putting his flare in people's faces, taunting them as he goes through. He runs out the back, jumps the wall, and they all head off to the airport. And then when they arrive at the airport, there's a bit of confusion because the chemist is no longer in the car. Where's Lawrence? So Frank sends Frederick off to go find him. Please. You left him at the pub. Twat. Will you go back? So Frank walks on into the airport and we get to meet a few more characters. Shit, you're pissing on me fucking boots. These skinners here are also after Elmo's drugs. What about Felix de Souza? Fuck him, leave it to me. Sorry about this fucking liver one shot. Run! But Frank quickly scares and waves his six year, so we won't be seeing them for a little while. What a fucking day. We then meet this police officer who's at the airport, also waiting for Elmo to get off the plane. I mean, really, like, literally everyone knows that this guy's going to be on this plane. But don't think about that too much. And they'll only be referring to this police officer as Mark Lone throughout this film. Any objections? Anyway, he's waiting at the airport, knowing that a large black gentleman with a dress has come off the flight. So they wait for the passengers all getting off the plane, and out comes loads of different black men all wearing dresses. So what do they do? Follow them all. Over. Now, I don't even know how you'd follow that instruction, but... So the police are following random people, and then Elmo walks easy peasy right through. But for some reason, the hit woman stop, and I don't really understand, just from convenience of the plot, I guess. So Elmo and Frank meet up, and they walk back to the car together, where Sam immediately asks where the chemist is, because obviously he's expecting him to be there. Where's the chemist? Where's Lawrence? It was a mis genuine, generally mistake. So Frank takes Elmo's golf clubs, and he goes to put them in the boot, and this is where we get to see where the chemist has been hiding this whole time. What's that? So yeah, major miscommunication has occurred here, and it's shit like this is why I love this film. There's just so many examples, like funny wordplay, it's just... 
beautiful. So they shot the boot after many fair attempts and they set off to go meet Durant. And on the way they phoned him to explain what happened to the chemist. And they give a very justifiable reason to take someone's life. Look boss, it wasn't my fault. Besides, it was fucking irritating. We see Dawn, which is the name of the hit woman. As she goes to meet the guy called Icky to get some guns. And while picking out her guns, we learn that Dawn is actually Frank's ex-girlfriend. And she also knows exactly where the deal is going on because Durant has used the same meeting spot for years now. Which is also very convenient for her. Her job's been done very easily so far. What the fuck did they do to this fish? Fish and chips. National dish, mate. More like a national disaster. I'm sorry, size he's going to skip on this meal. And they arrive at the meeting location and while in the elevator, Frank decides he's going to pull this little joke on Elmo and he's going to make fun of his skirt and he, he, he tries to like call him a fag with the bottom. Oh no, it's not that funny, but Frederick loved it. Anyway, they get off the elevator and then Frederick does this weird wave as he walks in. I mean, if someone walks into a room and waved a meal out, I'd immediately feel unsafe. Some men settle in, get their jackets off, and we're introduced to a new chemist. And this geezer's been shot in the neck, so he can't even talk. And you ever get freaky with that thing or what? Anyway, the meeting finally starts. Frank walks over to the windows and his spidey senses go off. And they're spot on, to be honest, as Dawn is opposite the building with a sniper pointed right at him. So, Elmo starts explaining his new drug to Durant. And once they've tested it, they get a big thumbs up. And in case thumbs up wasn't enough, Frank gives some verbal confirmation. Dog's bollocks. And then suddenly, there's a knock at the door and Frank goes over to answer it. And he hurls his poor housekeeper over his shoulders and they all put their guns in his poor woman's face. And after they've all done that, put guns in their face, Frank just gives her a tenner and she just walks off. Bollocks. Dawn then gets a phone call from a lizard instructing her that she must now keep Elmo alive instead of killing him as he has the formula for the drug in his head and no one else has access to it yet. So Dawn decides to spray the room down with bullets. Not the best idea when the man you try not to kill is in the room. And once she sprayed the room much, she actually ends up shooting the chemist in the neck and right in the same spot where he'd been shot before. Like, can you imagine, yeah, surviving being shot in the neck just then end up dying by being shot in the neck later on? So then all the men take cover and start shooting back. And Frederick is crouched down behind the maid's table. And he just puts his gun out and just starts randomly shooting. And the guy in front of him is like, what the fuck are you doing? And just turns around and shoots him. Which is very sad because, you know, that's the end of Frederick, man. To be honest, you didn't get enough of him in this film. He's only been in it for like 30 minutes. It's just unfair, man. I thought he was a great character. So Elmo grabs the bonds, which are worth like a million and a half each one. And then for some reason, when a guy aims his gun at him, he decides he's going to use his paper as like a shield. I don't know what he's expecting, like the bullet to be stopped by it, or the geezer won't shoot it because it's worth so much money. So once Dawn's got a kill streak, Felix and Elmo head out. But on the way out, Dawn decides to give Frank a little playful shot in the ass. Anyway, once they get downstairs, they're in the lobby and they're greeted by the skinheads from earlier. And Sam just beats the shit out of all of them. And then they chop into his car. And then the police arrive at the scene. And now we get this epic chase sequence. This is not the way we do fucking business! By we, I'm pretty sure he means Americans, and I don't really understand why he's saying that, as he's completely forgetting what he did at the start of the film. Anyway, Mike's in high pursuit. <laughs> Didn't need it anyway, Doors just dead weight. And eventually they come to an alleyway, and Mike almost drives right past them. But he pulls up into the alleyway, and we get this little standoff. So they start charging at each other, and Sam's on a suicide mission as he completely releases his hands. This causes Mike to reverse in panic straight out into the street where a transit round smashes into him. It's okay though, because he survives this. So he puts to the dock, thinking they had no nurse in their tail, but on the way here, Elmo saw Dawn, so he knows not to risk staying on this dock. So he decides the next best thing to do is to drive straight off the edge of the dock and onto some cargo ship inhabited by a bunch of homeless salesmen. So these two, they get into an argument. I'm stuck in liver fucking fool with you! Because <laughs> Elmo wants Frank to sell his car so they can get a new one which you know, actually works. The one they've got is completely fucked. And we get another one of our favourite moments from Frank in this film. Do I look like the Salvation Army? Have I got Jim and Fix It written on me fucking hat? Shame about the Jim will Fix It line though. Mike arrives at the dock too, a bit late to the party, and he gets a call from an officer who's at the hotel where the shootout took place, and we see Frederick sat in the corner where he looks like he's more in a KO than dead, if I'm being honest. Anyway, we then find out that Durant survived the shootout, so Mike orders the police officers to bring Durant to the docks for questioning. Get that fat fuck down here pronto. But sir, he's dying. Well, then you better be fucking quick about it, ain't you? So he brings Durant to the docks, and it goes from being just in questioning to being a full interrogation and he's chained to the bottom of a container. And while Mike's interrogating Durant and shouting at him, he keeps shouting at his other police officer. And like he's shouting at him as if he's dad telling his kids to look away while he can slap his mum up. <coughs> like, son, I told you, face the fuck front! And like any child in that situation, the police officer still looks. So what Mike wants is, he basically wants a 50-50 split 
of whatever Durant gets from this deal with Elmo. And Durant, the cheeky fucker, even tries like haggling in his way to get a better deal. Like you're not really in the position to be doing that. So they come to an agreement they're gonna get 50-50 on the deal. He then gives the instruction to put Durant down. Take him down. But the operator's too busy listening to music and he releases the entire container. <laughs> so Frank rings Icky up, who's gonna be the new buyer, to set up a new deal. And that goes smoothly. Well, Frank and Elmo thought that went smoothly because Icky actually had Dawn on the other end of the line and has told her where they're going to be meeting. So Sam and Frank get a new car. What the fuck is that? And I don't know why he's complaining. That's a fine set of rules if you ask me. And right now they're in search of a lab so they can make some samples for Icky. And like, you know, I don't really know where they're going to find a lab because they look extremely hard to come by. Like, it's not like if people just come up to you and tell you they've got a lab. Anyway, so they first pop into the chemist to get all the ingredients they need. Oh, and I forgot to mention earlier, this drug is all made from legal ingredients only. And when they're in the chemist, Frank acts like a 14 year old when you've taken away their lost Mary. Cigarettes are bad for your health. Well, so's a fucking punch in the throat, mate. They need fucking nicotine. I'm arguing the chemist, the skinheads all burst in and try to rob them. And it kind of seems like they're going to kidnap them. But what they do is they demand that Elmo must come with them and make drugs in their lab. Well, that's very, very convenient if you ask me. So the skinheads take them down to their lab, and for some reason, I don't think this lab actually belongs to them. I don't know, just a slight hunch I've got. So Sam gets to cooking, and after watching the skinheads act like a bunch of monkeys for a bit, Sam has finished making two batches of this drug. He's got Classic Blue or Race Car Red. Race Car Red gets its name because it only takes 60 seconds to kick in. Obviously, the skinheads all take the Race Car Red pills. So after about 60 seconds, the pills kick in, and it just causes them all to violently shit themselves. So Elmo and Frank use this opportunity to leave and take all the blue pills with them. I personally would have kept a few reds in the first days where you just can't get out of here. So they nick the Skinner's van and then make their way to Icky's nightclub where a deal will take place. So they sit down at Icky. Well, Elmo does. Felix goes off to talk to Dawn as he spotted her from upstairs. And the deal commences and Icky is happy with the product from just licking it, which is not the most effective way to test it. But this turns out chemists because someone's gone around killing them all, so I guess it's going to have to do. Anyway, Icky then shares some great words of inspiration. See, I always knew I'd be a drug dealer, even when I was a kid. Then Sam pops up on stage and does a speech and throws out drugs to the whole crowd. And I just want to say, Joe and Happy Gilmore, like, he goes to his happy place. Yeah, well, this would be mine. Anyway, Dawn and Frank are still talking by the bar, and after they share a smooch, Dawn handcuffs him to the bar. Then, unfortunately, police bust in, like, a bunch of fun sponges start arresting people. And in the midst of the chaos, Elmo says the most relatable line from the movie. And he's then taken away by Dawn and she makes a phone call to a lizard. And he's on a plane right now flying over to come see Elmo and he's not intending on it being a very friendly visit. So trying to find the way out, so they decide to go up to the roof and then make their way down from there. But when they're close to the edge, Sam quickly gets Dawn and dangles her outside the building. And he decides to cut her in on the deal for some reason when he could just drop her. Which he really didn't have to do, but Elmo's just nice like that. So Sam puts her onto the ladder and they start making their way down the building. But then Mike shows up on the roof and he puts a gun in Elmo's face. Well, and this just turns him on. Damn I'm joking, it's Dawn's arm. And this is just a distraction and Elmo knocks out Mike. We're in cut to Mike who's awake now and is trying to interrogate Frank. And he's here trying to get Frank to fix the deal so they can ambush Elmo and arrest him. And obviously Frank says no because he's loyal. So Frank gets let out and he pickpockets some keys on his way out. And he drives home to find Elmo and Dawn already waiting at his house with his mum. Elmo calls Icky and not so subtly suggests that the deal take place at a football match. And Icky, using his big boy drug dealer connection, gets him a private booth at the match. Then the organisers ask you like massive cokeheads or something to be giving away their booth to a drug dealer the day of the match. And yeah, they end the phone call and all the characters arrive at the stadium for the grand finale. And Elmo gives Frank some heartbreaking news. What about the game? We're staying to watch the game, right? Dude, I'm in and I'm out. I mean, come on, this has always been talking about for the entire film. It's the sole reason he was doing this job in the first place. And that was just for, like, regular seated tickets. And now he's got a booth and you want him to not watch the match. I oh, don't know, mate. I'm kind of disappointed Elmo for this one. So anyway, they head in and they make their way up to their booth. Elmo and Icky begin talking business. And after a bit of discussion, they come to a deal. Elmo gives Icky the formula. And it's actually in a really cool way. Yeah, it burns a bit of paper and it, like, slowly reveals it. I don't know. I thought it was pretty cool. But then Dawn bursts in with the lizard. So the lizard's here to take the formula and kill Elmo. And Icky decides that he's going to try and slime his way into a new deal with the lizard. And actually, it seems to have worked. So they toast, and then the lizard shoots him. And I mean, come on, he's an American. You really think he's going to want to split his money with you? Anyway, the lizard holds Elmo up at gunpoint and rambles on for a bit. And then we get the big reveal. This is the most expensive candy on the market. Yes, that's right. This whole time, the drug wasn't even a drug. The drugs are fake, you know. It's bogus. 
And then suddenly Mike bursts in, holds Lizard at gunpoint. And then Lizard just literally combusts. Like, he just blows up. So it's not completely random. As the reason it's happened is actually because Elmo drugged the drinks that Icky and Lizard toasted over a minute ago. So Sam drops some facts and they walk out. Drugs. I always kill you in the end. So Elmo gives Frank and Dawn their cuts and they go on their way to watch the rest of the match together while Elmo leaves the stadium. So that's it, that's the end of the film. I mean, honestly, what a journey this film was taking us on. It's just amazing, because no matter how many times I watch this film, it will still be as fun as I watched it the first time. It's just full of memorable moments, funny dialogue, and it's just so underappreciated. I'll never understand why it's not more talked about. And I really hope you enjoyed this video, and I suggest you go watch this. There'll be links down below. Trust me, you will not be disappointed.